Hello and welcome to Rapid C++ Development, combining Embarcadero C++ Builder with Microsoft Visual C++. Your instructor is Rob Swindell, Embarcadero MVP. This is video 0 of 10, an introduction and overview. In this video, you'll get an overview of the course, discussing why you would combine Embarcadero C++ Builder with Microsoft Visual C++. Provide an overview of what you'll learn, and you'll meet your instructor. And now, here's Rob. This video series covers the development of Windows applications using C++ Builder uh, for the GUI, or the graphics front end of the application, uh, and Visual C++, the Microsoft Visual Studio product, um, for the back end logic uh, in the form of DLLs. My experience with the C++ development tools from Borland and Inprise and uh, CodeGear, Embarcadero, <laughs> uh, goes back 30 years uh, to the original Turbo C, uh, probably version 2.0, uh, but that was about 1988-89. Uh, that was actually my first exposure to the C programming language, and uh, the primary tool used for professional development for a number of years started using Microsoft's uh, C compiler probably within the early 90s. Been very involved with a lot of other embedded development environments, uh, Unix and GNU C compilers and many others. But uh, when it comes to Windows development, uh, still primarily using the Microsoft and uh, Embarcadero tool chains. My first uh, combined project using both uh, Visual C++ and uh, C++ Builder was an or open source internet server suite. The uh, backend logic is very uh, cross-platform and supported a number of Unix-like operating systems, operating systems like OS2 and, and uh, Windows, of course. And, but yet I wanted a very nice Windows GUI on top of this uh, very portable code. So uh, the quickest way to get that was using C++ Builder and uh, the backend as DLLs developed uh, in, Visual, in Visual Studio, Visual C++. So that, uh, that project actually remains today, and that's still in that, in that configuration of a mixed project uh, for Windows. The subsequent videos in this series are going to teach you what you need to know to combine Visual C++ and C++ Builder modules into a single combined project, beginning with object and library file formats and compatibility. Even an experienced developer may assume that all object files and library files are interoperable, and we're going to cover that in detail in that segment. In the subsequent segment, we're going to detail what is necessary to create a Visual C++ built DLL that is compatible with your C++ Builder application. This topic includes creating C++ Builder compatible import libraries, using C++ Builder tools like Kafka OMF, Implib, and Tlib to create and examine library and object files. It's going to discuss how exported DLL functions are affected by C++ name mangling and function calling conventions. In the next segment, we're going to jump into sharing data between and debugging mixed projects. That's going to include sharing string constants, dynamically allocated strings, evaluating how memory leaks could occur, or heap corruption, and how to get around those problems. Also, I'll demonstrate how to use both Microsoft and Embarcadero debuggers to debug your mixed project. In the following segment, we're going to detail how to share files between your Visual C++ compiled code and your C++ builder code. That includes dealing with issues like multi-byte to single byte encoding, writing data to files, evaluating function failures with the debugger, and comparing standard C file access methods with Windows specific methods. In the next video segment, we're going to cover sharing data structures between your Visual C++ and C++ Builder projects. That includes issues such as structure alignment, which includes padding and packing, integer size issues, and how to overcome those. In the next segment, we'll detail how to dynamically link DLLs with your application. The next segment gives an example of how to create GUI applications using Visual C++ and MFC. Then we have a C++ Builder and VCL GUI application development example. And finally, in the last segment, we have a review which combines example VCL applications with example Visual C++ DLLs and goes from beginning to end, creation, and debugging of the application. 
and details issues that can arise from combining DLLs with your C++ application. Professionally, I worked for a number of years, more than a decade, for a very large chip manufacturer developing Ethernet controllers, firmware, uh, drivers, and application software uh, related to the firmware and drivers. These were deployed on name brand desktops and notebooks and servers uh, that you would probably know of. You work for a large enterprise, probably have one or had one at least at, at some point in time. Um, so you had this uh, combined Visual C, C++ Builder project uh, deployed to that Windows install, very likely. How that uh, project became a combined project uh, is probably a, a good uh, use case story or, or user experience. When I uh, first was handed the ownership and responsibility of um, a firmware configuration tool for Windows. It was an MFC project developed in Visual C version 6. And it was not a great application. It was uh, not very customizable, although different uh, PC OEMs required customization. Uh, they wanted you know certain user interface features to look differently or be enabled or dis disabled, have different logos and such. Um, they basically wanted it kind of customized. Uh, for, for their uh, platforms, uh, so that were, the way that was implemented anyway in this MFC application was actually have forked versions of the code uh, with different resources and such, and it just was not maintainable that way, and it wasn't um, very easy to localize or customize, uh, and uh, the source code consisted mostly of boilerplate code, you know, that uh, would be auto-generated by the uh, IDE, the environment, the Visual Studio environment. Uh, when you dropped a control or modified something, it would uh, create an event. It would create a bunch of boilerplate code that you weren't expected to modify, and yet that was really the majority of the code. So maintaining that code was not uh, very fun or, or feasible. Um, so rather than rewrite all the code, I left the back end as a visual uh, C++ project. Uh, it was already in a DLL form used by other many other applications, including... Um, third-party applications, so really, really no interest in, in changing the tool chain for that uh, DLL. Uh, but the front end, this GUI, um, I chose to write in C++ Builder. And uh, the result was um, a project that was very easy to maintain. Uh, not only did it happen quick, uh, but it was easy to customize um, later as, as new requirements came in, add, add more capabilities. Um, dynamically change the look and feel based on uh, OEM uh, requirements uh, and registry settings. So did not need forked code, did not need separate binaries, um, just needed the, the installer for a particular OEM to set registry keys a certain way, and then it would look and feel how they wanted. And it was really very easy to do uh, in a very object-oriented, easy drag-and-drop UI uh, development environment uh, that was provided by C++ Builder. Uh, it's a very successful project. Um, it uh, supported 32-bit windows very well. Um, at the time, there Borland or Barcadero, I forget, um, did not have a 64-bit uh, compiler uh, for C++ Builder. It was 32-bit only. And uh, for 64-bit platforms, we really needed a 64-bit uh, binary and executable. So um, at some point, uh, the company hired or assigned the task to another programmer to port uh, my GUI, my C++ Builder GUI, uh, back to an MFC project, you know, with all the same capabilities and customization and everything. And um, it, he did successfully do this. It looked and felt a lot like the C++ Builder application. But the source code was 10 times the size, literally. Uh, so source code, um, if, if you're a programmer for a long time, you realize... Um, more source code is not better. Uh, less source code is better. Uh, digital debt it actually has a cost. Um, the more lines of code you have, the more likelihood you have for bugs. Uh, and so, um, you know, it wasn't a, a good thing that, you know, the, the size of the source code exploded when it went back to an MFC project, but it was a clear-cut um, example of what needed to be done in the two environments, uh, source code-wise, and managing that source code and also just uh, the ease of, uh, configuring the forms and the controls and the look and feel and everything was, was much easier in the C++ environment. 
Well, that's it for video zero. In this video, we learned that combining C++ Builder and Visual C++ lets you leverage the strength for each flavor of C++. You can use C++ Builder for rapid front-end GUI development, fast and flexible database connectivity, and easier to maintain projects. You use Visual C++ if it's your organizational standard, if you have legacy code to utilize, or to take advantage of some of the source that's widely available with Visual C++. Up next, we learn all about object and library file formats and their compatibility between both Embarcadero C++ Builder and Microsoft Visual C++. Thank you.